right. I don't, I don't have to. Uh... Here we go. All right, first of all, Isaac Brown, extremely excited for him. Uh, great opportunity, obviously well deserved. We played against them. Uh, so, so obviously not in just a symbolic measure. I think he's doing a hell of a job and, and have has earned the opportunity to continue to to be the head coach there. It's a great program. Obviously, they've been really successful, uh, but it's awesome to see you know a guy get rewarded. Um, I, I I said this before. I know how hard it was for me. I took over a job in in March, and all the challenges that it was to get to the season and everything that you know went into it. He took over in like October <laughs> and, and it's not like they had like 10 guys returning and things were good, new roster controversy and, you know, kudos to him. So happy for him and his family. And certainly uh, tip of the cap to that a athletic director, because somebody had to make that decision. He didn't hire himself. Uh, so tip of the cap to that AD and, and administration. Hope that community continues to support him. And I know they love basketball up there. Uh, as far as OU, obviously a huge game. We're, um, we're excited about the opportunity to play against them. Uh, we know they've had a really, really good season. Coach Kruger is one of the best in the country, and uh, I'm sure he'll have his guys ready. Uh, certainly after coming off, I'm sure it was a disappointing loss on the road for him. Um, and it's going to be a really hard game for us. Uh, they got some seniors who will be playing in their last home Bedlam game, and, and I'm sure it'll I mean as much to them as it does to us to go up there and try to compete as well as we possibly can. Yes, sir. I figured out the volume issue. Uh, and now let's take the first question from Jacob Under. Go ahead, Jacob. Mike, how's it going today? Great. Hey, on the, on the topic of, of Isaac at Wichita State, did you know him very well before this year? Um, we've crossed paths. So Isaac was an assistant coach at Arkansas when I worked at South Carolina. He worked for John Pelfrey there. So, you know, obviously you kind of recruit same areas, you know, when you're in the same league, you play against each other and and uh, so I've known him. I, don't, I wouldn't say we have a close relationship, but we've talked multiple times. And obviously, I've been a, I've been supporting him throughout this year, except for you know that uh, one afternoon in December. I uh, wanted to see him do really well, and and I think he's done uh, exactly what you know you can do if you're given a chance. And you never know what someone's capable of until they have an opportunity to do the job. And I'm certainly happy for him. I, I want to go and get this out of the way before Bedlam stuff, but what was your reaction to the South Carolina Lamont Evans stuff yesterday? Uh, I, I don't know if I had a reaction, honestly. Um, I, I didn't read all the details of it. I've been really, really focused on getting ready for this game. Obviously, I'm aware. Um, I, I don't know how relevant it is to our cases. Our case is at a different point. Um, so I, you know, I'm aware of it, but not spending a whole lot of time focusing on it. Um, and just just move on. Yeah. Um, and any update on ice for this weekend? Is he gonna play? Is he ready to go more? Or is he, you know, how's he feeling? You no, know, it's interesting. He um, you know, his foot is much better, but he hurt his hand in the game the other day. Um, and and I don't know if it's severe, but it, it certainly has limited him in practice here the last few days and um, yeah, he's doing what he's supposed to do, getting treatment on that. And, and, you know, we'll see tomorrow how he feels. And going against Austin Reeves, uh, this weekend, he's, he's been one of the, the better scorers in the league. Um, what do you guys, what's the challenge of defending him? Uh, really crafty. Um, he has a great understanding of the game. Uh, he knows how to manufacture points and not everybody has that ability to score when they don't shoot well, which he, he obviously is numbers from three or down, um, but he's reinvented himself. And I think he's the leading three point uh, free throw shooter, excuse me, in the league. And he gets there, not only makes them, but he gets there a lot. And so we got to try to make sure we're not putting him on the foul line to help him manufacture his scoring. Uh, and then, you know, sometimes you got to just get different bodies on him, different size, maybe some length, maybe some quickness, uh, to try to keep him off balance so he doesn't get comfortable with trying to attack one one type of defense. Is you, you always people always try to compare players? Is is scouting him kind of like scouting a Mac McClung? Maybe is that kind of the similar scoring ability, ability to create shots? Uh, 
in some ways, you know, I could stretch it there. Their games were very different. Mm -hmm. uh, Max got a much louder game, right? Uh, right? Austin actually can get 25 relatively quietly, right? It's hard, but he's a really good player. And, um, you know, he plays with such great pace. He doesn't really get sped up. And, um, you know, he's a handful because because of that, he kind of controls the game on offense for them because he has the ball in his hand so much. Awesome. Thanks, Mike. Uh, next question is from Marshall Scott. Go ahead, Marshall. Yeah, Mike, a lot of coaches with rivalry games still, you know, use the cliche that it's just another game. Why have you decided to go the other way with it? Uh, I, I don't know. I don't know if I have thought about the other option. Uh, to who I am. I, um, I embrace competition. Like, like we want to win. Like it's not, I don't think it's hard. I mean, that's not, I don't think there's anything wrong with saying that. I don't know why anybody would say that it's not important, right? What we, what are we playing for? And the game does mean more to, to our fans. That's, it's just the reality. I mean, I, I've always just tried to be pretty honest about it. Uh, I, and I don't know if Carson's on here, but I, I think his, his tweet to me the other day was trying to maybe get me to back off of that. And, like, no, <laughs> we don't like them. That's how I feel. And we're going to go try to win the game. And that's how I approach them all. So I don't know if I ever thought about the other way to approach it. It's just not really who I am. You've, you've talked about the importance of recruiting Oklahoma before. Um, you've got three guys on your roster that, you know, play significant minutes that didn't have an OU offer. Do you find that odd? Do you feel that this game means more to them? Just kind of what are your thoughts on that? Um, I don't get to decide who other people recruit. So I, I can't say whether it's odd or not. If I grew up in the state of Oklahoma and one school recruited me and the other didn't, I, it would mean more to me, um, but that's me. And so, you know, it kind of goes back to the previous question. It, it's a big deal to be able to represent your state and they have an opportunity to do that at, in Stillwater. And so, um, I'm, I'm excited that they have a chance to play in this game. And the only reason they get to play it is because we believed in them. And so we'll see how they respond. Is, you've, you've been a part of a lot of rivalries, I'm sure, over the years. Is there something that makes this one unique, or is it kind of similar in that, you know, one team doesn't like another team? No, I, I think it is unique in, in this sense. Like, like, everybody picks a side. <laughs> I mean, like – there's no, I want to see the state do well, not during this game. And like, even the people who go to the other schools in the state, they like one school or the other in this rivalry. And I think that's what makes it unique is that it goes beyond just the game. And, you know, there's some places that you could live where something else could be important tomorrow. <laughs> not here. And people who don't normally follow basketball will watch that game. You know, they may not watch us against K-State. They may not watch OU play TCU. They're going to watch tomorrow at 2 o'clock. And, and I think that's what separates it. And then you guys finally got, you know, the schedule update, and it wasn't too favorable to you guys. You've talked about, you know, just a day at a time, especially in a year like this. But kind of what are your broad views on, on the weeks that you're about to go through? It's the Big 12. Uh, it's not ideal in this sense. You wouldn't rare, you would very rarely finish the season with two road games, specifically the, the extent of travel that we'll have to do to play them. Um, but it's an unusual year. So, you know, we could complain. What would that do? <laughs> or we could try to look at it as, you know, we get a chance to play, if it all works out, four games against teams that are going to be in NCAA tournament and an opportunity to prove that we're worthy and capable of being in the conversation with those guys. Um, and I'd like to think our guys think of it as the latter and are going to go and try to compete as hard to prove that we are capable of playing with and potentially beating anybody that anyone decides to put it in front of us. You know, one thing about the timing of the schedule in my mind, at least the way I try to flip it, we're going to get to the, if, we're fortunate to get to the tournament. We won't know prior to a week before who we're playing the next week. So, and then we'll have to go play two potentially really good teams again. And so maybe it's preparation for us for something down the road. 
And then last thing for me, Monday will be, you can kind of mention it, Monday will be the last game in GIA. Kind of what are the, what are the senior night kind of, it's obviously a weird year. What's that going to look like? And obviously with Kate, I imagine he'll be somewhat a part of that. Yeah, it'll be, it'll be, uh, it'll be different because everything's different this year. Uh, but we'll do our best to try to, you know, show those guys the same amount of love that we can and appreciation for the time they've spent here. You know, <laughs> the unique part is, I think my first year we had four seniors, maybe five. My second year, we didn't have any. Last year, we obviously had another big group. This year, we're going to have, we're going to have a chance to honor three guys for playing their last game in GA, playing their only year in GIA. <laughs> and, you know, obviously we're going to include Cade in that. And I think it's important that as many people can come out, come out and, and really show uh, some appreciation for his commitment to not only coming here, but representing us the right way, playing the game the right way and being a really good teammate and ambassador for the university. Is it weird that, I guess like Bryson Farron, obviously Cade looks like he's going to be going to the NBA, but Bryson Farron, they could return next year. Does that add another element to this strange senior night? Yeah. I mean, you know, again, I try not to think that far ahead, That that's something I don't want to miss the opportunity because we never know, you know, what's going to happen, what could happen. Um, and so as opposed to assume or have that conversation now where it's not really relevant, uh, let's just do right by them while we have the opportunity right in front of us. Yeah, thanks, Mike. Our next question is from Frank Bonner. Go ahead, Frank. Hey, Mike, multiple times this year you talked about, you know, making sure that your players are having fun while they're doing this. This playing into the, the, the bedlam and not shying away from that, how much more fun does it make for you and for the players to – to, to get excited about a, a rivalry like this? Yeah, it should be fun. I mean, I mean, first of all, the notion that we don't think about every game as, you know, we want to win is <laughs> kind of crazy. But we understand the gravity of this game, right? We understand that the people in this state are going to show up to work on Monday or show up to church on Sunday and be talking about what happened tomorrow. And that's pretty cool. Sometimes they won't, right? Sometimes, like I said, OU fans or Oklahoma State fans probably didn't watch a whole lot of college basketball last week. We didn't play last Saturday. <laughs> so they're going to be watching tomorrow. At 2 o'clock, everybody who has any interest in sports will be watching that game. And, and, and half the state will feel really good. And half the state will go to church praying that that team gets better for the Monday game. And then are, are there any like advantages or disadvantages of, of playing the same team in a three-day span? I don't know. This is new for me. Um, you know, you don't really get this in college very often at all. It happens in the NBA some. It's like kind of a baseball thing, right? You, where you have these series. Um, and so I, I'm curious to see, and obviously I want to focus on tomorrow, but what does Sunday look like? I have no idea, really. You know, it's kind of different. What Do we practice? Like, do we go over stuff? I mean, I don't know. I got no idea. So just focus on tomorrow, and then maybe on Tuesday you can ask for that. <laughs> but do you think there's any stock in – because win or lose, there's going to be things that you're going to take away from that, that game that you, you're going to need to work on. Is there any stock in knowing that whatever it is you say you need to work on, they literally have, you know – a day or two later to, to implement it that quick against the same team? Yeah, I'll be careful here. Part of me wants to say, why don't we just play 80 minutes and, you know, go home? <laughs> but we're not going to do that. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I mean, on Sunday, we'll watch the film. Win or lose, we'll figure out what we need to do to play better on Monday, right? And that's a part of it. And it'll be interesting to see how our kids adjust because it'll be weird playing the same guys that much time consecutively. I mean, it's just, I have no, I really have no idea how, how to, how to approach it at this point. We'll see after the game, maybe on Sunday morning, I have a better idea how to approach practice. All right. Well, if we get a chance. I'll ask you then. All right. Do we have any other follow-up questions for coach Boynton? Ah, Marshall Scott, go ahead, Marshall. Yeah, Mike, you mentioned, you know, we talk about the two games in three days kind of deal. Is there, and all the, extra emotion that comes with Bedlam. Is there any worry that, you know, emotions are going to spill over? Do you have a talk with your guys about that kind of stuff with them, you know, seeing these other guys so frequently? 
No, I, I no, I don't, I don't. That's not a concern. Um, you know, the one thing we talk about, um, emotion is a good place to start. It's a good reason to get motivated because something made you feel a certain way, but it's a bad place to end. <laughs> Right. So, so emotion is a good place to start, but it's not, it's not the best place to end. If, if when it's over, the only thing you have left is emotion, you probably didn't do something very effectively. So there's going to be a time we actually have to play the game. Well, we have to execute offensively. We have to rebound. We can't foul Reeves six times and give him 12 free throws, stuff like that. So the emotion will have to settle, um, but the game will still mean in terms of the impact. There's a lot of stuff at stake here. I mean, we're not just talking about just the rival as, as much as that's important. We're pretty close in the standings. And, and obviously they they had a really good run there, but you know, our our wins here recently and then them losing has kind of closed the gap between us to a certain degree. So we could we're in a position where we could be moving up the standings ladder in the league. And that's something you always want to do is try to get as close to the top as possible. You mentioned, you know, moving up the standings. I don't think there's been a season. Um, in your tenure where you guys haven't played that first round, is that something that you talk about with them to try and get um, to, a, to a spot where you're not playing that first day in Kansas City? Yeah, I guess the, the time, last time we did it, yeah, I was an assistant, um, and we didn't stay very long. So the object is to try to get in the tournament and win it. You can't win it unless you win the first game. So whenever we get there and play the first game, we'll focus on that. I mean, a lot of the – excuse me, a lot of times the tournament um, – and your success in any tournament is based on a large part of how your matchups align. And so obviously you want to put yourself in position to have the best seed you can so that, you know, maybe you're, you're not playing the best teams and then, you know, and then having the harder road. I mean, it's always not necessarily easy because this league's a bear regardless, but uh, some matchups just a little bit better for some teams than others. Thanks, Mike. I don't see any other follow-up questions. So, Coach, I appreciate uh, you joining us today. Uh, thanks to all our media members joining us as well. And uh, best of luck this weekend with Bedlam. No problem. See you guys.